Hello, I am Reverend Irene Smith, and I'd like to welcome you to Generationally Speaking. Here at the table, we come and we discuss life issues, no matter what they might be. As we sit at the table with each generation, we all learn, we all grow, we all are inspired. Yeah, yeah. Generation and we speak. see that Kush is considered um, uh, Ethiopia, and we Ooh. see that Mizram, also called Egypt, is uh, is uh, a portion of where some of the children of Ham settled. And then we have Foot, which is Libya, and Canaan, which is Israel. So if these people came from the sons of Ham, are the sons of Ham, and they settled throughout Northern Africa and also to Northeast Africa, you can see that they were of African descent. And no one can take that from us, but what they can do is hide it from us. And in hiding it from us, there is an untruth that is being disseminated. And the, un you know, Jesus said that if you're my disciple, you will know the truth because the truth is in the scriptures and the truth will set you free. So it's up to us as children of God, as Christians, as people who study the scriptures to share this truth with the world. I will say Re also- Reverend Joanne, let yes. me stop you real quick right there because man, you, you spit out some nuggets Mm -hmm. That we still salivating on, we 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 <laughs> we still digesting. When you started spitting out, you know, when uh when when they came off of that ark, and 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 where these um all the these sons, uh, well, I'm sorry, when you talked about them, the, these children, where they located themselves, you know, um that right there was like we read that in history in the Bible, but we don't put any emphasis on it because if it's in scripture, it's important to us. It's telling us something that for years now, we've just been overlooking and just, well, they went, you know, here, they went here, they went there. Pastor Shamika, I mean, my, 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 I, I'm going to go with you because I see Durham got notes. He got questions. <laughs> Durham got notes, but you know what I love so much about this is because I was just doing a study on Genesis when um, the word of God says that he created us, them in his image. He created us male and female. We're created in the image in the total image of God. And what I realized is that anytime that our image get distorted, we have a distorted viewpoint of who God is. And so when, and so when we talk about Africa, and we talk about when we talk to our children and say who you are and this is where you come from. But when it comes from a place of distortion, we don't know who we are. So we don't respond from the richness where we come from and we have our identity identity and something else and we don't live out pure purpose because we don't realize that we are truly kings and queens because they have given us a disseminated um point of view come on y'all i'm i'm excited about this because now i understand when they came into the school and they said that you are from africa and your ancestors are from here you know and it's because you cannot have a distorted view of yourself because you have to operate in God's full authority, in God's full image of who you are. And it's not, they show us physical features, but it's not just physical features. It's in who God is is wrapped up totally when he spoke in the beginning and said you can produce you can multiply you can distribute this is your land you're over the scurry of the land you have all of these things these things are for you and when we see that nothing anymore can be able to make us insecure broken and bitter because i know who i am 
because of whose I am. I just needed to say that because maybe that'll hit somebody right there that you are totally who God called you to be and don't let your vision of who you are be distorted anymore. This is good. This is good. Minister Durham. Yes. Um, a lot of what Shamika just said is what was in my mind as Reverend Pumphrey was speaking. And I'll start with one of the key words that she said is that these things are purposefully hidden. Mm -hmm. They're not given to us and they try to distort it and give us something different, give us mm -hmm. something that's not real, a falsehood, a big lie, as Reverend Pumphrey said. But when we find what's hidden, mm -hmm. one, we can't hoard it and keep it to ourselves. We got to do what Reverend Pumphrey is displaying here. We got to share it. We got to pull some people's coattail and present it to them and show it to them because what it's going to give us is going to give us knowledge. And when we see where we come from, what our lineage is, who our, ancest who our ancestors are, it's going to allow us to be filled with pride. It's going to help us to walk with confidence. So we won't walk with our head down and looking down anymore. We'll walk with our shoulders back and our chest high, high out and our chin up because we will be enlightened. <laughs> we will be enlightened with what's inside of us because these things are what's inside of us. These are our ancestors that we are discussing here. And when we get filled with this knowledge and we are enlightened with this, it's going to buoy our spirit. It's going to buoy our spirit to, to not just sit and be okay with mediocrity and not just sit and be okay with just keeping our head above water. But we want to, we're going to be in, inspired to do more to not just survive, but we want to be inspired to thrive. And also what's in this is it speaks to that there is a God-given purpose in us and for mm -hmm. us. And getting to the realization of this knowledge, it will, it will help us to, to get closer and to be able to realize this purpose because we will pull on this strength that this shows is in us, this power that's inside of us, that this wisdom and this ability that's inside of us. So this is just awesome. This is just so awesome. Um, may I say one thing? And again, I'm going to go back to Pastor Shamika because she had a mentor. And I remember when I was in high school, and one of my high, my history teachers said, okay, next week, this was like on a Friday, next week is Black History Week. I don't know anything about Black history. Mm. So I'm inviting you all to go home and to find out what you know about Black history mm. and you can bring it back and share it with the class. Well, talk about humiliation and embarrassment. I was like the one of three people, maybe three people in my class that was black. And my thought was, we're going to spend a whole week on black history. How can we spend a whole week on black history? Nobody knows anything, you know. And so that is so pertinent, mm -hmm. so, um, so necessary for us to share with our children and our neighbors and our friends and our associates and in our churches. And so another thing I wanted to say was that, you know, this whole thing about studying God's word, um, it, um, uh, Jesus says to us, um, uh, consider the great commission, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Implicit in that message is to teach truth. And too often, as we study the Bible, we can't teach what we don't know. And so that's why it is important that where we can see ourselves, yes. We share it with others because, you know, it's um, where we see ourselves because too often I have heard, you know, why are you pursuing the white man's religion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that Jesus was a man for all people mm -hmm. and that 
his, not only was he, his interest diverse, but he was diverse. His, 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 his apostles were diverse. His, uh, the places he traveled, the people he interacted with, he did not segregate or isolate or misuse the truth. And as his disciples, it's important that we get the word out. This is just one element. We know that our focus is always Jesus Christ. We know that this uh, um, uh, African history or church history from a black perspective will not save us and it will not, it, it, it will not send us to hell. But do we want to be better disciples? Mm -hmm. Do we want to speak the truth? Do we want to operate in truth? Do we want to be good apologists and, and, and share the truth and have our elucidation, elucidations in truth? We want to do that. So it's important that people know. It's important that um, we know that um, uh, uh, as we go forth, that um, uh, Israel, I mean, um, Egypt played such an important part in our history. And not only did they play an important part of, in our history, unlike what many would say, they were not white folk. Mm -hmm. However, because of the migration, and um, because of intermarriages, because understand this, some of Ham's children went in different directions. Because of intermarriages, then you're going to get a mixture of people. And that mixture, it does not denigrate who we are because we know our origins, yeah. you know? So we should be proud of our origins. And, you know, Egypt itself, the very concept of Egypt meant black land. And so if it meant black land, that meant that black people were coming from the black land. And if you go through the scriptures, the Old Testament, um, Egypt itself, the, the, the Egypt, the um, country, Egypt, the territory, was mentioned over 700 times in the Old Testament. And all of those times that it's mentioned, were we ever really aware mm. that that should Ooh. encompass mm. us as people? <laughs> you know, that Jesus went to a black territory for refuge. Jesus came to your ancestors, your mamas, your daddies, your great, 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 great grandparents, uh, um, parents to be comforted and to be nurtured and to be hidden, you know? So uh, I just think that is an important concept for uh, our people to know. Um, not only that, Egypt is mentioned over, uh, 20 times in the New Testament. And um, uh, folks need to know that. You know, um, uh, uh, think about Ethiopia, uh, AKA Kush. Mm -hmm. um, it meant burnt face people. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't always designated as a territory. I mean, we look at Kush today, uh, back in antiquity and it covered the landmass that we know as, as um, Ethiopia and the Sudan, so forth and so on. But it also meant um, uh, uh, Blacks of the diaspora, not in contemporary society, but Blacks back then, because we had Blacks, again, migrating to other territories. And anyone who had that black face, they were called Ethiopians, you know? So the Ethiopian eunuch was really black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And the Ethiopian eunuch served as a treasurer in a 
black country. And the Ethiopian eunuch, when he presented himself, he was a man of means mm -hmm. and a man who was studying the scriptures. And so, um, um, Reverend Joanne, he, yes, right there when you were talking about the Ethiopian eunuch, when we think about him, when we read about him in scripture, we 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 uh, we automatically elevate him. We don't we don't we don't devalue him, but we elevate him as someone who is who is well educated, one who uh, is a mean. So I, I think that in, in our in our reading somewhere along the way, maybe it's just here in this diaspora <laughs> that we we don't we don't associate ourselves readily with with that that person or I, I don't know. I mean, uh, Minister Durham and Pastor Shamika, your thoughts. Well, going back to what Reverend Pumphrey said, um, being good disciples, right? To be a good disciple, we have to study to show ourselves approved. You know, we had to get in God's word. We had to be willing to share. So that entails and involves some intelligence. And we have intelligence in our history, as we're referring to in this Ethiopian unit. He was, he was, um, he was in intelligent, you know, he had some knowledge that he was willing to share. And so that's what we need to do as disciples, because I just got stuck on there when Reverend Pumphrey was just talking about being good disciples and, and what that means. So that means we have to feed ourselves we have to um, connect with God and be connected with the Holy Spirit, but not just that. We also got to be in that word and understand that word and even beyond the word to be well read and so that we can share with others, so that we can uh, teach others, so that we can mentor and lead others, so that we can be an excellent example for others. And that is in our history as we see that with the Ethiopian eunuch. Yes, I absolutely agree. And that's what my heart was leaning towards. You know, for anyone who's listening, I don't, for, for me, I don't want um, the individual to think that this conversation is about Black power, you know, so much. I want this conversation to, to be about something that we were saying earlier, like knowing where you come from, understanding what was happening, but still knowing that you are still supposed to have the heart of God with that and knowing how to use all of this information to continue to make disciples out of all nations, to continue to move and to navigate, to continue to love. You know, even when you see, we can even go as far as see other races and see the mixture of other races, you know, that we see multicultural and to be able to embrace this, not from a racist standpoint, not from a negative view, but to say we are all of God's people and we have a root from where we come from. Embrace that and keep it mush, keep it pushing. And keep it moving and keep growing from there. It is not a state to be inferior or to create inferiority, you know, with with certain groups or with certain cultures, but saying, OK, this is where I'm from. I can embrace this, but I'm still going to embrace who I am and where I come from. This is not a place of judgment. This is not a place. But don't deny me of who I am. Don't deny me of where I come from. You know, it's OK. It doesn't. I'm not saying that I'm better than you, but don't even erase my history because it becomes a threat to you. Don't erase who I am, you know, and let it suppress you. But this is what it is. Don't change it, but let's grow from this place. I wanted to put that out there because when I, I grew up in Chicago and Chicago is a very um, segregated place. <clears throat> and it's, it's segregated by North, South, East and West. And it's segregated by race, literally, in a lot mm. of places. And it's almost like when I was taught that New York was the melting pot. I felt like Chicago was too, but we were seg a segregated mind. If you're here, you're this type of African-American. If you're here, you're this type of African-American. And it kept us divided. It kept us divided. And it's just like, we all come from this root. We don't have to be divided. We don't have to fight. I'm not better than you because I come here or you don't know who you are. And I think we just have such a, um, 
like a film over who we are. And we're literally, we're in the, we're in the same, we're in the same race. We're well, trying to finish. Yeah. I'm thankful that you bringing all of this out. Uh, what, what this, this story, this, this study does uh, of geography is to, is to bring to the forefront for every listener that, that the history has not been totally presented in an accurate manner. And so the purpose is, is to show the accuracy now of history from a biblical perspective so that we all can understand biblical history. And then the term that she used is migration. And migration, we see all along through scripture. Even, uh, even Jesus spoke about, and, 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 and it, was, it was part of the, the Hebrew history when they talked about migration. And migration for them was the intermarriage, that intermarriage that sometimes uh, Jesus did not, uh, well, God did not want them to intermarry with certain folk, not based on their, uh, their color, but their hearts and their, their religion. So migration is something that we know, but, this, but we're bringing to the forefront historical accuracy that we have not uh, really been presented on the global uh, uh, perspective. And I think that's, that today is just a great place for us to, to be. And when we, when we look right now at these four slots, of us in these four slots, we each represent migration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the hue, the text, mm -hmm. we each represent what migration looks like. <clears throat> But now we're we're bringing to the forefront the 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 truth of history, so that we all can understand. No matter our migration, no matter our hue, that we can all understand biblical history that we can't change. Right. Okay, and Reverend, Reverend oh, yeah, go ahead. I just want to go back to that term uh, Shamika used: black power. So that black power term was just. Hey, look, we're excited. We're proud of what we have. We're just letting you know that we have power. We have excellence. We have intellect. And so like for me, like today, I don't like the term black excellence, and black intelligence. No, we're just intelligent. We just perform in excellence. <clears throat> but what we're just pointing out is throughout history, <clears throat> the continent of Africa and black people had uh, were a crucial element to the development of this world. And it wasn't just something on the side or something that helped or we were utilized by other races and culture. No, we had, it was a level playing field. We contribute just as much um, mentally and, and, and um, intellectually and, and even using our hands. So we're just saying that, hey, we had a crucial part in the, the development Absolutely. of this world. That's it. And you know, this um, biblical history, and I'm calling it church history, uh, but biblical history is, it's a real history. <laughs> and it's portraying real people from real places. And it wasn't just one place. And it, we, we, we see the impact of the world um, the world, the global world, and with the development of Christianity and how we all came together. And so um, I know that once again, um, and I know even today, there are many people who do not accept African people. They we we will we will say that um, uh, uh, we're proud of our blackness, but we still don't accept African people. And so I just think it is so important for us as a people, as black people, to understand that we're all connected. We're connected with the African people, we are connected with the European people, we are connected with Asian people. And in Jesus, this is definitely realized. And so I think it's important that um, 
we understand, we as African-American people understand our history as it pertains to church history, because then as Tony Evans says, you know, um, the groups who are divided and, 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 and oppositional to one another, understanding this element of our history um, will bring us as one new man, uh, 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 uniting in one new body. And uh, so that the, the church can function as one church, not the black church or the white church, but we can function as a Christian people and not divide ourselves, you know? And so not only have we seen that there are many, um, uh, uh, well, we just looked at two, two of, two countries, Ethiopia and Egypt, but we have to consider the cities that are outlined or, or um, um, uh, uh, indicated in the Bible, with Alexandria being one, Cy uh, Cyrene being one, and Goshen being one, and e e um, Heliopolis, Hel Heliopolis being one. So we need to understand that these cities are so often presented in the Bible, but we don't know where they are. And even Carthage, while we don't see it explicitly noted in the Bible, Carthage had, had, Car the city of Carthage had so much influence on church history. Um, um, but let's just consider the city of Alexandria itself. It was the home of one of the most important churches in early Christianity. You know, think about this, that um, uh, Tertullian um, was from uh, Alexandria. And think about this, he was the church father who brought the concept or who or who um, helped us to understand God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit being one God in three persons. He's the one who gave us Trinity. Um, we um, need to understand also that um, uh, that um, when Alexandria uh, was um, uh, standing as a, uh, a center of learning, that it was John Mark, <laughs> the apostle, the writer of the gospel, who actually took Christianity to the city of Alexandria and from there it dispensed.